11, 1 through 12, 3. So it's basically the percent, fraction, decimal section, up through odds in the probability section, the probability of the chapter. Okay, so any questions? I mean, if you weren't here last time, don't, well, I don't know why I didn't bring these with me, but there was a handout that you might want to come see me for. Oh, here we go. Yay. Handout from section 12. Anybody need that handout? Want that handout? Okay. That's uh, from section 12 for the expected value one. If you were here, it was the earthquake insurance, stuff like that. Earthquake insurance, yes. Um, okay. Uh, so there's no questions. I'm going to get into the next section. 12.5 is all about something called tree diagrams. Um, so, so to get away from using uh, poker chips, blue poker chips and green poker chips, that gets a little old. Uh, and you guys are like, yeah, yeah, it's done that. Um, let's talk about Let's go back to horse race. So, so let's say I'm going to bet on the first two races at uh, racetrack. Uh, and race one has three horses I can pick from. So there's like uh, a little miss thing. Uh, something or other. And... Uh, and uh, what else you got, Jeff? Paul. <laughs> and then race two has four horses I can pick from, just to make it easy. A, B, C, D. All right, I like it. All right, those owners lost their creativity. Too bad. Horse B. Like, I guess kind of with me. LSP. Uh, Lumpy Space Princess, yes. Um, so, so let me help me out. If I'm going to pick one horse from each race, how many total combinations are there? How many total tickets could I make? So a ticket could be like, I pick horse L and horse A. So LA would be a ticket that I can create. Yes, sir? Twelve. Total. Total. How many options do I have for the first race? Three. 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 So for every, if I pick this one, how many options do I have after that? Four. four. So for every one of these, there's four options afterwards. So three times four is 12. So I want to know how large a sample space is. Have we talked about, have we talked about sample spaces yet? All right, we'll talk about it right now. Um, so if I wanted to create what's called a sample space. So a sample space is all the possible outcomes. That's all a sample space is. So, uh, oh, screw it, you just stay. Um, so if I wanted to try to create the sample space, I could say, uh, there's a very organized way to do this, but just to kind of get it started, I could say LA, LB, and just start listing all the possibilities, right? So this is all the possible combinations of winning horses. So horse L could win, and then the horse A could win, or horse B could win, so forth, right? All right, so if I want to know how large this is going to be before I even create it, I just say there's three options here, three options. There's four options there. So then the size of this is going to be 3 times 4, 12. I like it. So if you had five options for breakfast and four options for lunch, how many total combinations could you make? 20. 
Yeah, five times four, 20. I love it. Be cast. Sweet. Okay, okay. Um, so, something that gets unwieldy pretty quickly is what is the point of this section. It's called a tree diagram. So, a tree diagram of this situation would look like this. You, you make a different branching off between every option you have. So, I have an option for race one, I have an option for race two. So you can imagine, once we start to create this thing, if there are a couple more races, you'd have to turn your paper this way, maybe tape some more paper on, just to keep track of everything. So this is how you start it off. The first branching would incorporate the first race. So this is race one. And what could you pick? You could pick L, S, or P. Off of each of those branches, you could then pick any of the horses for the second race. So off of this branch, there would be A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Cool. So the idea of a tree diagram is very straightforward, very easy. But you can see how I add one more race on there, and that's like, holy crap. If I had a race three with five horses, uh, no. No, thank you. So I think I tried to sign homework that didn't get too crazy, because that's you know that just gets to be busy work. Um, so you can see the sample space kind of coming right off of here. Here's L A. So this is kind of like a path I take. I have to choose this way to go, and once I choose that way, I can choose any of these four ways after that. Cool. So then the sample space I can just collect it. If I chose this path, that would be L A. If I chose this path, L B, L C, L D, and so forth. Blah 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 blah. And of course, you can see a little better now, it's going to be, there's four of these, and how many groups of four are there? Three. So that's, what, that's three times four. That's where it comes from, three times four. Bless you. No? Thank you. I kept it in. All right. All right, how are we doing there? I mean, that's not too insane. I like it. Okay, so let me see if they throw anything else weird at you. Uh, yeah, okay, here's something. So can you guys take a minute and try to create a tree diagram for this situation? This is going to be uh, for a couple, going to have three kids. And of course, that's when the last group comes out as triplets, and you're like, oh, five kids, holy shit. A uh, couple plans on three kids. Try to model that situation, all the possibilities as a tree. Try to, try to do it. Try to do it now. All right, so if you don't... And we're assuming they all come out, right? Huh? We're assuming they all come out, right? Yes, assuming that all of them are healthy and, and come out and, and, and make it into the world, yes. Okay. Thank you. It's a good assumption to make. I don't want any sad branches on this tree. So just first kid, second kid, third kid, I try to do it. I have to prune some of the branches off, you know? All right, yeah. <laughs> Let's not go to too far down that that uh, that path. Good. All right, thanks. Yes. Do you mean by like making a tree like from? So what could happen for the first kid? First kid could be a. Oh, we're doing like boy girl. Yep. Or something? Oh. Okay. I like it, and I think somebody's earlier point. We're going to assume that. <coughs> Kids can be identified as a boy or a girl. There are biological situations where you are both, but we'll say they determine one or the other. All right. I love all these little students find a way to bring in the British shit to make something not quite. Were you going twins? What about that? Oh, and then that would be you know They're one of them. We officially call one of them kid one, and the other one kid two. One of them beat the other one out. Right? Absorbed it. I love you guys. Yeah. What's that? Absorbed the other no, one. No, 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 no thing hand off your face like South Park. Yes. If it was three kids, wouldn't it just be like, like three different groups of boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, or? So the first kid, each each branching is an option. So the first kid, in this case, not an option, just could happen. What could happen for the first kid? A boy or girl. Now coming off of there, if the first kid's a boy, what could happen next? Or a girl. 
boy or girl. And if the second kid's a, if the first kid's a girl, what could happen next? Boy or girl. Boy or girl. I like it. Cool. So this is a very simple tree. I just wanted to let you guys create one that wasn't too crazy. And then of course here it would be boy or girl. Boy or girl. So what would the sample space look like? Boy, boy, boy. Boy, boy, girl. Boy, boy, girl. Boy, boy, girl. Boy, boy. Uh, what are you leaving out? Boy, girl, girl. Does this, uh, does this strike anybody as familiar? If I replace the B's with T's and the G's with F's, does this harken back to something we did earlier this semester? True, 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 false, true, false, true. That's the PQR, right? It's the same thing. Because how many options were there? True or false? So it, it would actually be exactly the same setup. I'll be, I'm not done there, right? How long would that list be? How many options here? Two. Two times how many options for each of those? Two. Two times how many options do you have? Two. Two to the third. I like it. Yeah, so it's B8. So, I mean, you really just have, I don't know if you guys remember this. Remember this guy went crazy, boy, girl, boy, girl. This one is boy, boy, girl. Blah, blah, blah. So now you just do girl, 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 and then these are repeated. Jeff is a G. Okay, how are we doing so far? So assuming that boy and girl are equally likely. And boys, I think we talked about this already, boys are a little bit more likely to happen. Did we talk about that yet? Yeah. That feels familiar. And why do you think that would be? Because Cause they die more. Because they die more and, and earlier. So nature has a neat way of somehow adjusting for that. So more boys are born. <laughs> Slightly more, like 50.46% versus 49.54%. Because we die more. You guys yeah, exactly. It's true. So if you're born a man... Let's see how far we can make it. Uh, Probably got like five more hours. But assuming, <laughs> assuming, I'm glad that you came. <laughs> That's very nice. Yeah, like, what can I do in the last five hours? I'll go to math class. Yes. So if you assume that these are equal, they're, they're pretty close. So let's say they're 50-50, like most people think they are. Um, are any of these more likely than any of the others? Probably. If boy and girl happen at the same time, frequency at the same rate. Neither boys nor girls happen more often. Isn't it akin to having a bag with all the same number of poker chips, four red, four blue, four green? Everything's equally likely. They all happen at the same rate. So would any of these be more likely than any of the others? They're all equally likely. So all these are equally likely. So let me see if you guys can get this in. We can do something we normally can't do unless we know this fact. What's the probability then that a couple have three boys? How many match what I'm looking for? One out of, One three, out of eight. eight. What's the basic idea of probability? The number that matches what you're looking for divided by the total things that could have happened. Always. That formula never changes, to be honest. So it's one out of eight. So if you have a friend or know somebody that's got three boys, they had a one out of eight chance of that happening. 12.5%. Kick ass. So what about this? What's the probability somebody gets... Uh, do I want to go there? Uh, yeah, let's do exactly one boy. Three out of eight. Exactly one boy. Wait, no, you gotta count. Who do I count for exactly one? Do I count this one? No. No? Oh. No. 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 Yeah. Yes, so there's one, two, two three. three. So three match what I'm looking for. I was looking for exactly one boy out of the total of eight. I like it. That's right, don't let him get in. Talk to you about that. What about the probability I get at least one boy? Yeah, exactly. Seven out of eight because there's only one situation that doesn't have 
any boys. So the rest of them have to have at least one boy. Seven out of eight. Kick ass. I like it. Cool. Sweet. So when you construct a sample space, if everything in there is equally likely, all the probability questions are easy. They're easy. Okay, so we're slowly going to build our way to what the hell do we do when that's not true. Let me make sure I didn't forget anybody in this tree stuff. No, okay. So kind of going in that direction, let's let's do a smaller tree real quick. So we got what they want from up here. We got what they want more than you wanted. Okay. All right. So let's say that, uh, yeah, let me, uh, now I'm going to fall back on this. So let's say it's four red and six blue poker chips. And I'm going to reach in, and now this is a question somebody had earlier. I'm going to reach in, take a poker chip, look at it, and then drop it back in. Is everybody with me? What does that have to do with anything? Well, if I took it out and, and threw it away, how many poker chips are in there now? And that's going to change all of my probabilities, right? So I'm going to put it back in so nothing changes on the way. So if I make the, so I'm going to pick two chips with replacement is what it's called. So I'm going to replace the chip I pick. I'm not going to feed it to my little brother or anything like that. What would the tree look like? Every time I ask a question, I wonder. So you start off with two branches. What's that? Start off with two branches. Yeah. So if, uh, yeah, every each branch is going to have each uh, main part is going to have two branches, right? So for the first pick, what can I pick? A red. A red. A blue. Or a blue. I like it. Is anybody concerned? Why don't I put like four branches of reds and six of blues? What would the four and the six affect? What would the fact that there's less reds than there are blues, what will that end up affecting? What's the title of this chapter? Probability. And it'll change the probabilities, right? Like, I'm going to end up, well, let's keep going. The next stage, what could I get? A red or a blue. Red or a blue. Red or a blue. So what's my sample space? So this is a little more easily handled tree. What's my sample space? I like it, I like it. Now be careful. Again, these numbers only affect the probabilities at the end. How large will my sample space be? Well, this is kind of silly. It's going to be four, isn't it? The size of it is going to be four. Can you see that? What's the first thing? Red, red. Yeah, so red, red. What's the next thing? Red, blue. Red, blue. And then? Blue red. blue red, blue blue, blue versus red, red versus blue. All right, but this, I really want this to make sense. The number of each does not affect. I could have 18 billion reds and 47 trillion blues, and everything I just done would be the same. They'd be exactly the same. Because what's going to happen when I take two chips out? You can get a red or and a red. Or a red and a blue. I don't care how many there are of each. This is everything that could happen. The probabilities of these depend on how many there are. Does, does that make sense? I like it. So you're not going to say to somebody, what could happen? You get your red or a red, or a red or a red, or a red and a red, or a red. Oh my God, you already said that. Holy shit, just say that once. So the numbers don't change that. All right, I like it. So watch this. This is kind of cool. Um, how often will this happen? So this is not a choice I can make, is it? I'm going to reach in and pick something out. It could be a red or a blue. I have no control over that. I'm not going to go, that feels red. i got a special ability. No, screw that. You want a better superpower than that. So how often will I pick a red on the first pick? Four out of? Six. Come on now, you better than that. That's it. There's ten 
chips. So how often will I pick a red one? I'll get four reds that match what I'm looking for divided by 10 total chips. So four out of 10 times, I'll pick a red. Two out of five. I like it, two out of five, key counts. What about blues? Six out of 10. Three out of five. You're like, what do you want from me? <laughs> All right, is that, is that cool? I really want everybody to understand. So, and then I put that one back in. I put it back in. So what's the probability if I had picked a red, let's probably get another red on the next go. Three, four. 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 Still four and ten. I put that red back in, right? You guys see what's going to happen, though, if I don't put it back in? Yeah, it'll be one less. It'll be one less red and one less chip. It would have been what here? It would have been three, three nights. Uh, one out of three. I like it. One third. I like it. But I didn't do that. I put it back in. So this would still be... 4 out of 10, what would this be? Uh, 6 out of 10. 4 out of 10. 6 out of 10. Alright, I like it. Alright, let me stop there for a second. We're not going to do problems like this, but I want to do this once to show you where the idea comes from for what we do. Um, so 40% of the time, are you guys cool with that to say it like that? No. 40% of the time, I'm going to pick a red first. Out of those times, how often will I get a red again? 40%. So this, the probability I get a red and then another red, will be 40% of 40%. And what does that mean when I see the word of with fractions or percentages? That means multiply, kick ass. So the probability I get a red and then another red will be 0.4 times 0.4. 4 tenths times 4 tenths. So what's that? Yeah, 0.16. So that's the probability I get a red and then another red. All right, cool. So we are developing a method to figure out the probabilities if they're not all equally likely. If they were all equally likely, this would should be 1 out of 4, right? 1 out of 4. Is it 1 out of 4? No, it's how related to 1 out of 4. It's how related to 1 fourth? Less than. Why is it less than? Because there's less red than blue chips. Yeah, kick ass. So what should be the most likely thing in here? Blue, blue. Blue, blue. I like it. Cool. So what, do you, what would this be? What would the probability of red blue be? 0.4 times 0.6. 0.4 times 0. 0.6. 0. 0.24. 0. This will be the same. same thing. Kick ass. Oh, I got this next one. 0. 0.6 times 0. 0.6. Jesus. Oh, so. Blue, blue. 60% of the 60%. 0. 0.36. 0.36, cool. Oh, I'm so happy you're here, Karen. Let's see. And if you add all those up, 100%. I like it. And of course, it's got to be 1 at the end because that's, that's everything that could possibly happen. So all the probabilities have to add to be 1. I like it. Cool. Cool. So I was hoping that maybe this idea of multiplying would make more sense if you saw it in this form. 40% of the time you get this, but it took 40% of the time to get this. So 40% of the 40%, you'll get both. And we know that of means multiply. I like it. So, uh, we already kind of did one, I'm, I'm sort of transitioning into the next section, by the way. Tree diagrams are pretty straightforward. I don't think we have to do too many more tree diagrams to get the idea. Cool. I like it. Um, I'm trying to get us to the point, we, we, we sort of already have a formula for this, and we'll, I'll remind you about that. Right now, we're looking at a formula for this. That's what we're investigating here. Very often the word and gets hidden in probability. So when I see red, red, that is, and I kept saying this, this is a red and then another red. So the and is in there. I like it. Cool. So in general, the formula for and is just to multiply. If a certain thing happens. Oh, I shouldn't have erased that, sorry. So looking back at that real quick, looking back at that uh, 
So probably red was 40%, probably blue was 60%. 4 out of 10, 6 out of 10. All right, now go with me. If I picked on the first one a red, that's 4 out of 10. Well, what if I do this without replacement? What would happen to the next one being a red? Good. There's one less red, one less chip. What happens to this guy? What did I pick? On the first try, I picked a red. So how many blues are there? Still six. But how many chips are there? Nine. Kick ass. So not putting that first chip back in changes the probabilities on the second go, of course, because it changes all the numbers. And probabilities are based off of the numbers of things. But so, the third one, wouldn't it be over 8 because you're taking them all out? Where are we at? 6 over 8. No, because I've only, how many chips have I taken out by the time I get here? 2. Here I took out, what, how many? 1 red. Then you took out I took out 1. Now, this says I can go that way oh, okay. or I can go that way. Right. You can't cheat and get 3 so chips. Out like, the, the I got gotcha. you. Exactly, it would have to be a third pick. Yeah. Cool. So this equals this. That's what we basically have done. If A and B are independent. Oh, shit. So what do you think that word independent means? Like here, the probability of red on the second one, did it change? Yeah. Yes. So would you consider that to be an independent situation? No. We know what the word independent means. The second guy should not worry about what the first guy was. But he did. He changed. He used to be 4 out of 10, now he's 3 out of 9. So this would not be independent. In fact, how would you get the probability of red, red now? What would that be? Right. After, after you picked another red chip? Yeah, well that's what this means, right? Red and then red. 0.4 times 0.33. Yeah, let's just keep it like fraction. 4 tenths uh, times 3 ninths. You can make that 2 fifths times 1 third, which is? 2 over 15. I like it, cool. So, was red, red equal to the probability of red times the probability of red? No. No, because the second guy changed. So this idea of independence says, if you have a situation where probabilities change from one stage to the next, you can't just multiply them, you actually have to change this guy according to whatever the hell happened. I like, I like it. So that's independent on replacement, that's it. Yeah, with replacement is automatically going to be an independent situation because you keep resetting. You put it back in, it resets. Like if you throw it away, take it out, then it doesn't reset. But it's still based on multiplication, isn't it? Red and red is still multiplying two things. You just have to be careful about when the second guy is going to change. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. I like it. So, so we still have to figure out what this formula will become if it's dependent. It's still basically multiplication, but we do have one uh, idea left to go before we can complete this to be more general. So now I want to go back and reinvestigate OR. We already talked about OR before. Um, yeah, there are. So the way we talked about OR before was I had a chart. So let me make a real quick little chart. Men, women, yes, no. So remember this little chart we had? So the first thing you want to do, I'm going to be really nice and leave you like blanks on the outside. So if you're not sure what the hell to do, it's probably fill in those boxes is a good first step. So how many total men were there? Ten. Women? Eleven. How many people said yes? No. How many total people then? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Good. So this is where I ask you questions like, what's the probability I picked a, a woman if I pick one person out of these people? 
Yeah, how many? So probability is always the same thing. The top is how many match what I'm looking for, divided by the total number of things that could have happened. So how many people could have happened? I love that phrase. How many people could have happened? 21. 21. How many people am I looking for? 11. So that's the probability that I get a woman. A little bit less than... Well, what is 11 divided by 21? It's a little bit less than 50%, right? 11 out of 22 would be a little bit more than 50%. What's come out to be 0. 0.5? 52. 52? All right, but now let's look at or. What if I said, what's the probability I pick a woman or somebody who said no? What was the thing we had to be careful about here? Don't re-add the women. Don't add people twice. I like it. That's not fair. It might have happened in a few primaries, but we'll figure out someday. So if I do, if I say, okay, there's 11 women, there's 12 people that said no. Now watch this real quick. I made a mistake, haven't I? Is everybody cool with the fact that I've made a mistake? In fact, don't even write this down yet. I just want to show you. What would that become? What is that? 23 or 21. Why is that bad for a probability? It's supposed to be a probability. You can't have a bigger it's bigger than one. one. It's bigger than one. It's no way. You can't have a more than 100% chance of something happening. It's like it's so going to happen, it happens in the next town over also. I don't know what the hell that means. Right? So that's no good. That's telling me I made a mistake. So how many people did I count twice? I counted nine people twice. I like it. So what does that actually become? 